Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam, assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is our second sitting, and in the book by Imam bin Uthaymeen, rahmatullah alayhi. And it is his book, Sittings, or sittings during the blessed month of Ramadan. So in the second sitting, the Imam says the merits of fasting. So in this uh, chapter, if you will, or the topic that he's talking about here, he's talking about the merits of fasting. What does merit mean? What are merits? Merits means like the benefits or the like the benefits or the good the goodness of fasting. Okay, the merits of it. What what makes fasting great? Right. Uh, he says, from the greatness of fasting is that Allah prescribed it on all nations and made it obligatory on them. So we learned already that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it an obligation upon all nations throughout history, meaning the Jews and the Christians or Ahli Kitab, we say, and the previous nations the nations of Tawheed that came before us, that were callers, they were Muslim, but they had different uh, Sharia, they had different laws and legislation and rules and ways of conduct that they had to uh, uh, abide by. But what all the nations that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent to the people, what they all shared, all the prophets shared, one call, what was that? What was the call that all the, the prophets, and even after salatu wasalam, that they all had as a call. What did they have in common? Spreading knowledge. Hmm. Okay, knowledge about what? Knowledge about Tawheed. Mumtaz. Okay, let's see. That right there, just study it and watch it and you'll see. But, so, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem, وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَ فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةِ رَسُولًا إِنْ نَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَاجْتَنِبُ الْتَعْبُودِ That we sent to every nation a messenger to worship Allah alone and stay away from those things worship besides Him. A ta'bud. Ta'bud. So that means that lets us know all the nations, all the prophets, they were sent with a message and they were sent with a message of Tawheed. This is what they all shared in common from from Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam uh, all the way Ibrahim, uh, Ismail, uh, Ishaq, uh, all, all the messengers alayhi salatu wasalam, uh, Isa alayhi salatu wasalam to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasalam, they all called to the worship of Allah alone. They all called to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who created everything, who created us to worship Him and Him alone. So. And one of the things they had in common was fasting. Uh, and so we know this from the Quran because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kutiba alaykum siyam kama kutiba aladina min qablakum la'alakum la'alakum tatakum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O oh, you who believe, who's Allah talking to here? The believers. The believers, the mu'mineen. Good. He says, uh, Actually, this is another uh, in the uh, in the beginning of the ayah. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "O oh, you who believe, okay, O oh, you who believe." So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is addressing the believers. Uh, fasting as prescribed for you, uh, as it was prescribed for those who came before you, in order that you become pious. Why do you fast? To become? To come closer to Allah, but what is the exact word we just said? To become pious. Good. In order that you will have taqwa. This is what it means to be pious. It means to have taqwa. Taqwa means that you fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You fear the fire, and you put between yourself and the hellfire. Uh, you know, good deeds and following the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, to make it uh, another way that the, the ulama, they articulate that, is that taqwa is that it is doing what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands and staying away from His 
prohibitions, the muharramat, doing the halal, the commands that are halal, the wajib, and avoiding the muharramat. This is taqwa. Hi. Good. Bye. Uh, so then he said, one of the merits of fasting is that it is a cause for forgiveness. So one of the merits, merits is that it causes uh, you to get forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you fast, Allah is forgiving you for your sins. So that's the importance of having a khalas, being sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and fasting for his sake, and not looking at the haram, not listening to the haram, not doing the haram, especially when you're fasting. So fasting uh, expiates your sins. As it is stated in the Sahihain on Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said whoever fasts Ramadan with faith in seeking his reward his past sins will be forgiven. So whoever fasts iman and wa'ihtisab uh, with faith believing in all that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed wa'ihtisab you know, being patient and seeking his reward, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive him of his sins. So that's why it's so important for us to fast, seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness. Ben Othamin says, this means faith in Allah and pleasure with the obligation. So that means that you're happy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's made fasting. You shouldn't be like, man, I gotta fast another day. Ugh, I wanted to do this. I wanted to do this. I wanted to have some cigarettes. I wanted to do that. But instead, you should be happy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving you another chance to get forgiveness. Another chance. Yes, we're thirsty. Yes, we're hungry. Yes, it's, it's tough. Yes, you're tired. But Allah is giving you this beautiful another day to fast, to gain forgiveness, to come closer to Him, and do an excellent act of worship that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you immensely with. So this is a great na'mah min ya'amillah. And, and then there's all kind of other benefits. These are the health benefits. We don't fast for those reasons, but there's so many health benefits as well from fasting. People do the intermittent fasting, but this is complete fasting of water, uh, of any liquids and any uh, foods. And this has all kind of effects on your, good, probably good for your gut health and good for your blood and good for many, many, many benefits. But ultimately, the benefits that we're looking for is to gain that taqwa, to gain the piety from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and gain forgiveness for our sins. In Sahih Muslim as well, on the hadith of Abi Huraira radiallahu ta'an, the Prophet sallallahu said, the five daily prayers and Friday to Friday and Ramadan to Ramadan are expiation for what is between them if you stay away from the major sins. Beautiful hadith of the Prophet sallallahu He said, خمس صلوات الجمعة إلى الجمعة ورمضان إلى رمضان كفر ما بينهم if you stay away from major sins. So by praying your five daily prayers, between those prayers, you get forgiveness for your sins. Between Asr, you prayed Asr, and now Maghrib's gonna be coming up when we break our fast. Between Asr and Maghrib, if you prayed, and you prayed and Allah accepts your prayer, that's a forgiveness. <coughs> That'll be a forgiveness when you get to Maghrib. Maghrib will be a forgiveness for what happened between Asr and Maghrib. And what did the Prophet ﷺ say? He said, if you stay away from the major sins, letting us know that this is a forgiveness for the minor sins, not the major sins. So for example, someone who, Mithalin, the Karamakum Allah, they drink alcohol between Asr and Maghrib. Okay, this is a major sin. This sin would not be forgiven, even though they prayed, uh, it would not be forgiven by just praying the, the prayer be, uh, you know, praying the Maghrib prayer, okay? It's for the minor sins, you know, doing some smaller sins. Even Ghiba and Namima, those are big, major sins, backbiting people. And it was so easy for us to backbite people. Backbiting is a major sin. It's one of the sins that people get punished in the grave for Namima, for spreading wickedness uh, around the community of Muslims. So, for example, if you tell a lie about someone, 
and then you, you spread it amongst the people in order that the people will, uh, you know, laugh and think you're cool or whatever the case may be. This is a major sin. We know this because the Prophet ﷺ said, مَرَ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمَ عَلَى الْقَبْرِينَ فَقَالَ إِنَّهُمَّ لِيُعَذِّبَانَ وَمَا لِيُعَذِّبَانَ فِي كَبِيرٍ أما آخرهما فكان الله يستر من البول وأما آخر فكان يمشي بالنميمة. The Prophet ﷺ was walking by some graves, and he said to his companions, رضي الله تعالى عنهم he said, "Verily, those people in the graves are being punished." The people didn't know; they just thought they were graves, and they were graves of Jews. He said, "Verily, those people are being punished, and they're not being punished for that which is great, which is big." And then he said, as for one of them, is they not they didn't used to make a stench out and clean themselves properly. Maybe they got urine on their clothes when they went to the bathroom or whatever the case may be. And as for the second one, is they used to spread namima. So that shows us that that's a major sin. Uh, and the Prophet ﷺ mentioned it in there. And we know it's a major sin because it's attached to a punishment. And that punishment is one of the punishment of the grave. وَإِيَّاكُمْ بِاللَّهُ وَإِيَّاكُمْ then the shaykh he mentioned, he said another merit of fasting is that, is that it is not measured with a specific amount of reward, but Allah rewards for fasting without account. As it is stated in the Sahihain on Abu Huraira, radiallahu ta'ala, the Prophet sallallahu said, Allah said, every action of the son of Adam is for them, except fasting, which is for me, and I reward for it. That's a hadith of Qudsi. And that shows us that uh, fasting is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala holds it in high, uh, you know, as a, with a high status. It's a high uh, deed. And there's an immense reward for fasting. And the point of mentioning the hadith before that was to show that uh, Ramadan to Ramadan excuses your sins except the Barakah Fee. Good. Except for the major sin. So the one who, who drinks alcohol, the one who stops praying, the one who, you know, smokes weed, the one who does Wa'iyadun Billah, Wa'iyakum, you know, fornication or these kind of sins, this is a major sin. That's not forgiven just Ramadan to Ramadan unless they make Tawbah. They must make Tawbah. So it's not just because it's a major sin. Jazakallah khair. Good. Uh, then the Shaykh, he said, he said, and fasting is protection. And if one of you is fasting, let him not behave or speak indecently. If someone tries to abuse him or fight him, let him say, I am fasting. Inni sa'im. By the one whose hand is the soul of Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the smell emanating, uh, uh, emanating. Sorry, the smell emanating from the mouth of the one fasting is better with Allah than the smell of mist, as we talked about before. It's a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. For the fasting person, there are two moments of happiness. For the fasting purpose, there are how many moments of happiness? Two. Two. Good. Two moments of happiness. When he breaks his fast, he is happy to eat. And when he meets his Lord, he is happy with his fast. That's beautiful. So there are two times when the fasting person is happy. Uh, the, these two times, the, the, fasting per, the fasting person will be happy about this fasting. One, of course, is when, when they call that Adhan uh, al you're happy that you take that first bite of the timber. It tastes so sweet and it tastes so good. You feel it in your whole body. Even you get energy. You get that immense energy from that sugar. That insulin spikes your insulin. It's a beautiful, beautiful feeling. The second time, that second moment is when? Is when you're, inshallah ta'ala, you're in Jannah. And bi'idnillah ta'ala, you enter Baba Rehan. Because that's the, Baba Rehan or is Baba Rehan? I'm not sure. We'll, we'll check. Uh, because that is the bad of the fasting people. And everyone who fasts will go through Babel, uh, this bad, through this door. 
And that's an immense, that shows the, the, the excellence and the merits of fasting. The Prophet وسلم, said in another narration, every good action of the son of Adam is multiplied 10 up to 700 times. Allah said, except for the fasting person. For indeed, it is for me, and I reward for it. They leave their desires and their food for my sake. So fasting is even, even, even has greater reward than that. That's a great nirmah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We think of it as just we're, we're just stopping eating and drinking, but really the, the reward is when we reflect. And this is why Talib al ilm is so important because when we read these hadith, this is Talib al ilm this is seeking knowledge. Seeking knowledge lets you know the reward and it, make, it gives you more pleasure when you do the act of, uh, of, of ibadah. If you just worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with no basir, no insight, no ilm, no fit, no knowledge, you just do the acts, maybe it's your culture. Oh, everybody in my culture fast. Everybody in my culture prays, maybe. Like this. It just becomes habit. But when you know the reward and you think about it, and you think, subhanAllah, right now there are angels in this room making forgiveness for us because we're seeking knowledge. And we're fasting. And they're witnessing it. And they're making dua for us. And seeking forgiveness for us. You do that based on knowledge, and then it makes you, it, it, the religion becomes more real and practical for you, and you acknowledge it. That's why it's so important to read and seek knowledge and do the acts of ibadah. The Sheikh uh, Imam Ben Uthimini said this beautiful hadith shows the many merits of fasting in a number of different ways. So now he's going to explain it. He said, the first way, Allah has chosen this act out of many other acts to be for Himself. This shows the nobility of this act and how much it is loved by Allah. Fasting shows the sincerity to Allah as it is a secret between the slave and his Lord. Because no one knows. We, we all know we're in the same house. We know you're fasting. You know, we, we mostly think that you guys are fasting. You're probably not going in the bathroom, sneaking a little bit of date, sneaking a little bit of pizza, Sneaking a little bit of pepperoni, seeking a little bit of something, cake. No, but instead, Allah, this is between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And He knows if you're fasting. So this is between you and your Lord. And your Lord rewards it and it is for Him. He loves it. No one else can see the fast except for Allah. Someone may be by themselves and still not want to break their fast from fear of Allah and hope for His reward. For these reasons, Allah has rewards. Uh, Allah rewards this sincerity and made fasting for Himself from amongst the other acts of worship. As Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, He leaves. He's talking about the servant. He leaves his desires and food for my sake. On the day of judgment, the benefit of Allah choosing this act for Himself will become clear. So we'll know this reason on the day of judgment. Yom al -Qiyam. As Sufyan ibn Ayyana radiallahu ta'anu said, when on the day of judgment a slave is being taken into account from amongst all of his actions and his sins, and all that remains is the person's fast, Allah will take from him all the sins and enter him into Jannah with his fast. Because fasting, it gets rid of those bad deeds. So that's, that's immensely important for us to fast, fast Ramadan, and fast other than Ramadan. The second benefit of this hadith, he said, Allah said about fasting, and I reward for it. The good deeds are multiplied and numbered, the good deed with 10, like, like it, up until 700, like it, even more. And as for fasting, it is rewarded by Allah without regarding the numbers, and Allah is the most noble and gracious. And giving is based on how much one can give Meaning that Allah will give great amounts of reward for fasting without account. Uh, fasting is patience on obeying the law, and patience from disobeying the law, and patience on what Allah decrees. All the types of patience have come together in this blessed month, as well as patience with hunger and thirst and weakness of the body and soul. So it is a must that the fasting one should be patient. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah rewards the patient ones without account. 
So fasting exercises all these various types of patience. Meaning it, it takes patience to do worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To pray five times a day, that means you're patient. You're patient with giving up other things you could be doing. You could be doing more homework. You could be doing more job. You could be doing more ways of indulging in the dunya or more playing football or whatever things you like to play, PlayStation or whatever things you're doing. But you're patient. You give up those things and worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Likewise, fasting combines all those types of patience. Patience in being obedient to Allah, doing His commands, and patience on being away from uh, sins. That's patience. As well as the physical patience that we want. The third thing uh, the Shaykh mentions, he said, indeed, fasting is a protection. Protection from acting or speaking indecently. As the Prophet Wasallam said, when the day of fasting comes, do not act indecently or cause mischief. So when we fast, we should control our tongues as well. It is also a means of protection from the fire, as narrated by Imam Ahmed uh, with a great uh, good set, uh, chain on the authority of Jabir, عنhu, that the Prophet وسلم, said, fasting is a protection from the slave from the fire. So fasting, it protects you from the hellfire. The fourth thing, the smell of the fasting per person's breath is more beloved to Allah than the smell of mist because it is a sign of fasting so it is loved by Allah this shows the greatness of fasting in the view of Allah even something that is hated amongst the people becomes beloved to Allah because people hate bad breath I don't like people in my face with bad breath who don't brush their teeth don't brush their tongue but here this smell that comes from the person who is hungry that hunger smell that's coming out that thirst, that smell, it's not all that pleasant to us, but it's pleasurable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Something that the people dislike and Allah loves. And remember, ibadah, ibadah is everything that Allah loves and is pleased with. So that's ibadah. It's ibadah, and that's a sign of your ibadah from fasting. The fifth thing, for the person fasting is two moments of happiness. When do we say those moments of happiness are? When, when, when you break your fast. Good. Uh -huh. when, you when you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment, inshallah ta'ala. No. Or it could be in Jannah. So you'll be rewarded from that, for that. As for his happiness is breaking the fast, this is because they are happy with the blessing of Allah gives them and giving them the ability to do so. So one thing is very important is that we have to be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he even gave you the ability to fast. Some people, they can't fast because they have diabetes. Some people can't fast because they have all kinds of sicknesses. <clears throat> and they have to expiate their fast or whatever the case may be. They may have to pay uh, kafara for their, their fasting, you know, for the hungry, hungry people, okay, the poor, because they can't fast, they don't have the, the ability. But we have the ni'mah of having enough health to be able to fast. So Allah has blessed you to fast to get the reward from Him, and He's blessed you with the health to be able to do this act of ibadah and get the reward from Him. So this is why we can never count the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are so many ni'am from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, where are, uh, or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, where are the fasting ones that they may enter Jannah from the door of Rayyan, which no one else but they will enter. So that's a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, a hadith of Qudsi, uh, in which uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will say where are the fasting ones that they may enter uh, Jannah enter the door of Rayyan so this is a ni'mah from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala also in this hadith once the fasting one is, is cursed by someone or someone fights with them then they should not return with the same behavior so it's very important to be extra cautious and extra good with your tongue and your manners when fasting you're hungry you're tired, you get irritable, but you gotta try your best not to get and break your fasting. 
And that's an excellent reminder. That's why seeking knowledge reminds us. It reminds us, if nothing else. We already know this, ta'ala, but it reminds us. Just when I was getting the book copy, I was there, and a guy, I went and lifted up his papers by mistake. I thought my papers were under there. And then he kind of, uh, he said it was his in, in Arabic. And I walked away, and I was just thinking in my mind, I was thinking a lot of th thoughts. And anyway, but this was because of being irritable, kind of like, you know. But I reminded myself too that, you know, I'm fasting. I'm the non fasting. That's the thing, you know, you have to remind yourself. Maybe someone with a car, they try to hit your car, you know, all the kind of things we get tested with here. You have to remind yourself, in me Verily, I'm fasting. So that way you don't fight. So that way you don't get into conflict, but instead you preserve your fast. Why? For the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a higher purpose. Uh, also, they should not, they should uh, also not remain silent, but they should let the other person know that they are fasting so they know that they will not face them with the same behavior out of respect for the fast. Uh, repel with what is better, then will he between whom and thee was hatred become as it were thy friend in intimate. Yet to achieve this is only for those who are patient. It is not given to any but those endowed with the greatest good fortune. Also from the merits of fasting is that it intercedes for the person on the day of judgment. Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrates that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, fasting in Quran are two interceders on the day of judgment. The fast will say, the fast will say, my Lord, I prevented him from food and desires, so grant me intercession for him. So your fasting will intercede for you. That's why you want to make sure your fasting is correct and uh, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, so they will intercede, narrated by Ahmed. So fasting and reading the Quran will intercede for you on, on the day of judgment. Then the shaykh ends by saying, my brothers, the merits of fasting will not benefit unless you perform the fast in the correct manners and are mindful of its rules and boundaries, which comes through knowledge. Ask Allah to forgive your shortcomings during the fast. O oh, Allah, protect our fast. Make it an intercession for us. Forgive us and our parents and the Muslims and send your and may peace and blessing be upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Wa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ala Nabiya Muhammad, Wa Ala Ali Wasallam.